Hi everyone, Dr. Mark here. Today we're going to talk about atoms, elements and ions. Now the first one being an atom. Atom is a Greek word which means indivisible or cannot be cut. Now we know this because the first part of the word being a means not and tom means to cut. You've probably heard the word tom before or the suffix tom in otomy. So surgical terms, a corpus callosotomy means to cut the corpus callosum. So it means not cut or cannot be cut. Now everything in this universe is made up of atoms. That's you, me, the floor, your grandmother, your dog, all made up of atoms. Now while there's a large number of atoms, you and I are only made up of a handful. In actual fact about 95% of us is only made up of four individual atoms. Then the rest are called trace atoms or elements. So for example, 65% of your body mass is oxygen. 18% of your body mass is carbon, 10% of your body mass is hydrogen, and 3% of your body mass is nitrogen. Then around about 4% of your body mass is going to be made up of these trace minerals. These include sodium, magnesium, uh, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, and chloride. And then less than 0.03% is going to be made up of these other trace atoms or elements, such as chromium and mag manganese and iron and copper and zinc and selenium for example, this is less than 0.3%. Okay, so that's an atom. Now if we look at the structure of an atom, it's made up of a couple of things, three things actually, a proton, a neutron and an electron. Now protons and neutrons sit right in the nucleus, right in the core. A proton has a positive charge, a neutron has no charge, an electron which is flying around the outside has a negative charge. Now if you were to have a look at all the individual atoms on the periodic table, their number denotes something important. It actually denotes how many protons, neutrons and electrons are present. So for example, hydrogen being the first one has one proton, one neutron and one electron. If you were to add all these up together, add the charge up, one proton has a positive charge, one neutron, no charge, one electron with a negative charge, they cancel each other out and there's no overall charge for hydrogen. You can do this for any other one. For example, carbon, which I've drawn up here, has six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, cancels each other out, there's no charge for carbon when we look at it on the periodic table. So these are atoms. Now when we look at an element, an element for example is going to be a particular atom of a particular number of protons. So for example like I just said with carbon has six protons, well that's the element carbon. Any atom that has one proton is going to be hydrogen. Any atom that has four protons is going to be beryllium. So you can think of at, uh, elements as the flavour of atoms. Okay. Now when we look at ions, an ion is simply a charged atom or element. So here in the periodic table there's no charge but what you're going to find is that a subset of these atoms actually like to have a charge. Okay. So which ions are these? Well predominantly they're the non-metallic ions. They tend to be the mineral based ions as well being sodium, magnesium, uh, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur and chloride. Now what you'll find is that in our body they have a charge but in the periodic table they don't. So what's going on? Okay let's have a look. First thing is I need to grab a pen. What you're going to find is this. When we have a look at the periodic table you've got a row of atoms here which are called the noble gases. Now the noble gases they're noble, they love being themselves, they don't want to be anyone else. They're very comfortable and happy with who they are. Now when you have a look at sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur and chloride, they want to be like the closest noble gas. Now I want you to think about this for example. If we were to have a look at sodium, sodium is number 11. That means sodium has 11 protons, 11 neutrons and 11 electrons. So think about that, Pro sodium has 11 electrons. It wants to be like its closest noble gas which is going to be number 10, neon. So neon has 10 protons, 10 electrons, 10 neutrons. Now how does sodium become like neon? Well simply it needs to lose one of its electrons. If it loses one of its electrons it can then be like neon. Okay, so if sodium which has 11 electrons loses one, it's going to be closer to being like neon. But if it loses a single electron, that means it's no longer neutral. There's more protons and electrons by one, which means sodium has an overall positive charge. Okay, so this is why sodium becomes Na plus in the body. If we were to take another one for example, let's look at magnesium. Magnesium is 12. 
Okay, that means it has 12 electrons. It wants to be like its closest noble gas, which is neon again, 10. Now if magnesium has 12, neon has 10, it means it needs to lose two electrons to be like it. And that means it has two more protons than electrons when it's in the body. So it ends up becoming Mg2+. Let's do one more example. Let's take chloride, for example. It wants to be like its closest noble gas, which is argon. Argon has one extra electron. So when chloride gains an extra electron to be like argon, it now has one more electron than protons, and it's Cl negative. That's how we get the ions of our body. And now these ions have very significant roles within our body maintaining homeostasis. They play a role in sending nerve signals. They play a role in homeostasis in regards to mineral balance within the bones, for example. If you have too many or not enough, you can die. Okay, so this is atoms, elements, and ions.